Barry Peltz, Ira Joe Fisher, and John Frankel. This is News for New York at 11. Good evening. Ralph is off tonight. Jim Paymar joins me. It was a horrifying scene at a football stadium. Perry, a dangerous crush of football fans results in dozens sent to the hospital with several people in critical condition. It started, believe it or not, with a victory celebration. The scene at Madison, Wisconsin. Things get out of control as fans hit the field. 12,000 of the nearly 80,000 spectators surged onto the field to celebrate Wisconsin's victory over Michigan. The cheering, however, was quickly replaced by calls of help. We will, of course, uh, find uh, time to do an investigation very quickly so that we can really determine what happened here. It really puts things in perspective. I mean, it was a, a win and all. And I never, I never had a, hit a peak and valley in my entire life like that. It, uh, win right now means nothing to me, to be honest with you. If, you know, good for the team and all that. I just want to make sure those people are all right. The goalpost stayed in place, but not so with a metal rail fence that lined the front of the stands. It collapsed, and the crowd managed to pull a chain-link fence out of its concrete footings. The athletic director at the school said security just couldn't handle the surge of the crowd. A sniper in Southern California killed two people and wounded five others before he was found dead in his apartment. It happened in El Cajon near San Diego. The sniper fired from the second floor of an apartment. Where? Listen, where is it? Stay back because it's right around that corner. He's got an apartment facing that way and that way. So, okay, you, you get that in here and you're going to get the line of fire. Got it. Police say two of the wounded were treated at hospitals and released. The suspected gunman, a man in his 60s, was found dead in his burned apartment. Police say the cause of that death is unknown. Just two weeks ago, another sniper in El Cajon killed four people. An 11-year-old Queens boy is dead tonight, a victim of gunfire. Travis Smith was inside his family store on Guy Brewer Boulevard in Jamaica when he was hit by a bullet. Wife says she saw these two guys come across the street, coming across the street, so, so one had his hand in his pocket. So she said, everybody hit the floor, you know? She don't know what they're coming for, you know? So when he, like, when he's sitting, you know, the seats, bullet hit him right in the back of the head. Died right in my arms. I'm holding it. <laughs> Jesus. To kill an innocent kid. Yep. Innocent. 11 years old. Doing nothing. The boy was waiting for his mother to finish work in the family beauty shop when he was shot. Police have no suspects tonight. Well, we are down to the wire in the race to see whether David Dinkins remains mayor of New York or if Rudy Giuliani can push the mayor out of Gracie Mansion. With less than 60 hours to go before the polls open on Tuesday, both candidates were out today looking to gain the edge. News 4's Tiwa Chang with our report. <laughs> Just three days to the election, the would-be mayor and mayor are out campaigning to beat not only each other, but apathy at rain-soaked voter rallies. If you're willing to come out in this inclement weather and wait as long as you have, I know that you're going to help us turn out the vote on Tuesday. That's, that's a ship without a captain. Earlier today, the mayoral candidates focused on issues that have become cornerstones of their campaigns. Rudolf Giuliani that, hammered um, again at Dinkins' competence as mayor. The, this time, challenger Giuliani used the report of the New York City Procurement mayor. Board, which claimed the Dinkins administration had squandered an estimated $2 billion by inefficient hiring and purchasing for the city. The bitter debate and argument over how to cut the deficit and whether services should be cut for one person or another is a needless argument if government were operated honestly and efficiently. And this report makes that point in every single page of the report. This is what this campaign has been all about. <laughs> Mayor Dinkins used City Hall, the building, and the office to garner gay and lesbian support by announcing a domestic partner law. Hugging gay City Council Member Tom Duane and with Jesse Jackson beaming next to him, the mayor announced city employees with non-traditional families would be covered by health insurance. What I'm announcing today is nothing short of historic a milestone that we've worked long and hard to achieve. Domestic partners of all city employees, active or retired, will receive full health benefits. Today's rain forced the cancellation of several campaign stops for the mayoral candidates. If it were to rain on Tuesday, election day, 
It's feared it might reduce voter turnout. And in fact, who becomes mayor of the city? At this point, though, the forecast is for sunny autumn day. And that's perfect for voter turnout in what's expected to be a very close race. In Midtown Manhattan, T.Y. Chang, News 4, New York. The New Jersey gubernatorial race is in the home stretch with incumbent Governor Jim Florio and opponent Christine Todd Whitman driving hard to the finish. The governor got a boost from First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton today. Mrs. Clinton campaigned with Florio in a hangar at Essex County Airport. And Republican opponent Christine Todd Whitman was at an East Brunswick market and rally, urging supporters to take power back from the Democrats. On Sunday, Senate Minority Leader Bob Doyle joins her on the campaign trail. News 4 will have extensive live team coverage on election night beginning at 8 o'clock when the polls close in New Jersey. We'll have the latest results plus exit polls and analysis. There will be a special live edition of Dateline at 9 o'clock as the Dateline team and News 4 joins forces to bring you results and live reports from all the campaign headquarters. And throughout the night, you'll be able to get up to the minute results on the exclusive News 4 live wire. We'll tell you how the vote went in your town, plus break down all the key races, how the boroughs went in New York City, the counties in New Jersey. And still ahead tonight, the life and tragic death of a Yonkers politician. Why did he kill himself? Also, a hearing to try to unravel <coughs> a dangerous mystery, soaring cancer rates on Long Island. Then why firefighters are hopeful in their battle against the California flames. But first, Ira Joe previews the Halloween forecast. Well, Jim, we still have clouds, we still have rain, and it's still windy, and there is more on the way. Your forecast for Halloween 1993 is coming up on News 4 New York. A very sad day in Yonkers. The city awoke today to find out their former mayor and current councilman, Nicholas Wasisco, had been found dead. These pictures of Wasisco were taken at last Tuesday's council meeting. His body was found Friday at his father's gravestone. He was holding a 38 caliber revolver. He had a bullet wound to his head. The current Yonkers mayor was visibly shaken over the apparent suicide. Nicholas Wasisco, who truly displayed the courage to stand up for principle against all odds, Wasisco was a staunch supporter of a federally mandated plan to desegregate Yonkers. He was a runner-up of a John F. Kennedy Profiles and Courage Award for his efforts. Wasisco was said to be despondent over his recent primary loss to become council president. The woman who beat Wasisco in that race was also uh, distraught. An we all feel that way. We get so crazy at this time. Um, what's what's going to happen to us Tuesday? And it becomes so paramount and so important. Um, but um, it, it added to it, but it could not be the only reason for it. Nicholas Wasisco, at 28, became the youngest mayor in Yonkers history. He died at the age of 34. Perry? Jim in Brooklyn, a standoff at a hospital ended today after police convinced a man to give up his gun. The man went to the hospital early this morning to be treated for depression over the death of his parents. He put a loaded gun to his head after he had an argument with a nurse. He then held police at bay for three hours. No one was hurt. EMS workers accompanied the man to Bellevue Hospital for observation. Over the past few years, News 4 has continuously focused on the possible threat of cancer from environmental conditions on Long Island. Today, that threat was met head on at a hearing in Huntington. The Congressional Conference drew those interested in possible connections between oh breast God, cancer and electromagnetic fields. Among the participants, oh Senator God. Alphonse D'Amato, who has demanded an investigation into this alleged Your link. was lived in Nassau, and the facts and the numbers were just slightly different or something. For more than 40 years, the risk of getting breast cancer is 72% higher than a woman of the same age live in Nassau County for less than 20 years. Earlier this, earlier this month, the National Cancer Institute agreed to investigate the soaring rate of breast cancer on Long Island. Southern Californians are breathing a sigh of relief tonight as the continued threat of wildfires finally is dying down. Firemen are finally gaining ground on the stubborn fires. The dreaded hot, dry Santa Ana winds that were predicted have not materialized. And right now, a blanket of humidity has helped in that battle. But in spots, the fire still burns. Officials estimate 162,000 acres have been scorched so far. Damage is expected to reach well over $500 million.
today is the day exiled Haitian President Jean Bertrand Aristide was supposed to return to power, but that didn't happen. Leading anti Aristide forces celebrated what they call a victory. Military backers danced in the streets, but some Aristide supporters say they have a feeling of hopelessness. Meanwhile, a third faction is saying it will form a new government tomorrow, which it says won't include Aristide or the military. And still ahead tonight on News 4 New York, Ira Joe with the Halloween forecast. Plus, we'll show you the world's strongest man. But first, sitting in for John Frankel, Sal Marciano, preview sports. Sal. Yes, Perry, your Saturday night sports includes highlights of the Devils, Rangers, and Knicks. Plus, college football action, Notre Dame and Syracuse in separate games. All of that, much more. If you keep it where it is. Dual airbags. Uh, check. Available anti-lock brakes. Check. Crumple zones. Check. Rigid steel passenger cage. Ooh, check. The all-new 94 Mitsubishi Galant will pass your safety check with flying colors. And starting at $14,020, it will pass the checkbook test. Ah, check. Special leases on the all-new Galant S start at just $199 a month with only $1,000 down. What's so different about Scott and Todd in the morning on PLJ? The, uh, the phone scams are great. Listen to Scott and Todd, <laughs> 95.5 PLJ. Ah. Here it is, the new 94 Plymouth Grand Voyager. Dual airbags, reclining integrated child safety seats. The safest minivan in the world. With its roomy seven-passenger seating and V6 engine, you can really save. Come to the minivan store. Only at your neighborly Chrysler Plymouth dealer. They created their microprocessor in 1971, and the faster their chips have performed, the faster their company has grown. Today, the Intel design is the brains behind 72% of the world's PCs. And by the 21st century, Intel expects their chip to execute two billion instructions in one second. Where do you find such fast-thinking companies? Actually, there's a list of them printed every day. NASDAQ, the stock market for the next 100 years. Well, a Texas man did what seems to be the impossible today. He held two, yes, high-performance aircraft at bay with his own brute strength. Dennis Mighty Might Rogers is only five foot nine and weighs less than 150 pounds, but he held those planes in place for 43 seconds to raise money for a drug awareness program for kids. Ira, I know you're going to you're going to try that, aren't you? It's a good thing he wasn't doing it in New York. He would have been slip sliding around on <laughs> the uh, on the old Absolutely. runway. We refuse to leave Dennis alone. And Dennis, get a library card, okay? No, it's a nice cause and a, and, a, and a real great feat of strength. He had his Wheaties this morning, Mr. I Mighty Mike. I think he did. It. It's very windy out there. Dennis, if you were here, you wouldn't notice, but the rest of us mere mortals do. It's quite windy outside, and it's going to continue to be gusty during the night and cloudy and rainy. Let's go outside and check that temperature. Now, this is actually a live picture of fog. A lot of you, well, the younger people, don't know what fog looks like. We wanted to show it to you, and that's what it looks like right there. And uh, that's what it looks like, and the temperature is 45 degrees. Here's the deal. We have this low-pressure system, actually a pair of them. First one is up and gone. There's going to be another one close enough to our area that it'll keep the clouds over us and probably resume the heavier than normal rain tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Our exclusive live Doppler weather radar shows a few scattered showers around, nothing very heavy at the moment. However, we have picked up 97 hundredths of an, uh, of an inch of rain. 0.97 hundredths of an inch of rain today in Central Park, 0.97, okay? And there have been reports of an inch or a little bit more around our area. Let's check some other conditions, shall we? We have a north, uh, I'm sorry, an east wind at 10 miles an hour, 97% relative humidity, barometer rising, 29.58 inches. We hit 56 degrees today for a high, not very, and you figure 62 is the normal high for this time of year, overnight low, 45 degrees. Right now, at 11 o'clock around the Tri-State, we still have temperatures that are in the 40s. Atlantic City checking in with 50, and we have rain throughout the entire area. Not very heavy at the moment, but as we say, we have received an inch pretty uh, consistently throughout the entire area. Tonight, temperatures aren't going to slide back much more. They'll wind up in the 40s. Fog is going to form if it hasn't already done so and could be thick in places. Be careful when you drive about. Plus, there are slippery leaves. 
and a northeast wind at 10 to 20 miles an hour, even gustier than that tonight. Tomorrow, it's still from the northeast at 10 to 15 miles an hour, and yes, there will be some scattered spiders. And we'll see temperatures in the morning with the patches of fog still hovering in the 40s. And don't forget to set your clock back one hour tonight. It's the night to do that. Tomorrow, during the day, plenty of clouds, heavy rain in the morning. Uh, dwindling the way things looked out, a drizzle and showers of the afternoon, a northeast wind at 10 to 15 miles an hour. And here we go, the first five days of standard time tomorrow, Halloween. 52, the forecast high, it'll be cloudy with rain in the morning, showers in the afternoon. Maybe some clearing poking through tomorrow night so that Monday will be a mix of clouds and sunshine and a high of 51. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mostly sunny. 58 on Tuesday. We get a little bit of a warm spell on Wednesday when the temperature climbs to 67, and then it's back to 57 on Thursday. And our nighttime lows will be in the uh, 30s and 40s, although tonight there is a chance in northwestern New Jersey and Orange County, New York, in the higher places of some snow. Ho, ho, ho. Not a great deal, but it could get a dusting. Going over in western New York, one to three inches. And tonight is the night we set our clock back one hour. And Remember guess what? We, we want to remind people of something else as well. Yes. The firefighters all say that this is also a good time check to the check batteries. the batteries in your smoke alarms. Very good, Perry. Absolutely. Great idea. So, set your clock back. Check the uh, batteries and, in your fire alarm. And get your smoke costume detector. out for Halloween. Got it. And check your oil and the air pressure <laughs> and your you're tires absolutely. and you're all set. He's coming dressed as Ira Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ira. Sure. Next in view tonight on News 4 New York, all the sports with Sal. The Rangers travel to Hartford to take on the Whales coming right up. Put in my picket in. It comes specially equipped with dual airbags, cruise control, air conditioning, four-speaker AM-FM cassette stereo, and power accessories like luxury sedans costing twice the money. The 1994 Nissan Altima GXE. It not only defines what a luxury... Nothing sends chills down your spine and straight to your wallet like the cost of health care today. Your medical bills, sir. Which is why we're introducing HMO Blue to calm your fears with the largest choice of hospitals statewide. Really? Without the frightening high premiums. Oh, yeah? New HMO Blue from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of New Jersey, a better way of caring. City Bank has really uh, given us a new sense of... You've never seen a camcorder like the Sharp ViewCam. The viewfinder gone. Replaced with this LCD view screen. You're right in the action. Gretzky scores! Gretzky scores? Let's score the replay. Then, Gretzky play it back instantly with color and sound. Want to see that again? The Sharp ViewCam. An absolute original. So your first goal, Ty, had birthdays, graduations, your wedding, your kids, my grandchildren? I'm constantly making observations and looking at data. So naturally, when it came time for me to choose a car for myself, I was very interested in the hard numbers, the quantitative aspect of the car, the zero to 60 times, stopping and braking distance, things like that. Play time for all the sports now with Sal Marciano. Lots of college pigskin today. Yes, and Syracuse fans had a rough night tonight. Too bad. <laughs> You know, uh, Syracuse at home tonight lost to West Virginia, the so-called Beast of the East, rather disappointing. Jay Kelsner, the Mountaineers quarterback, opened the story in the first quarter with a West Virginia spanked Syracuse at the Carrier Dome in front of the Syracuse students and fans, avenging a bitter defeat to the Orange Men last year, the final 43 to nothing. Notre Dame was supposed to have an easy time against Navy, the Fighting Irish 35-point favorites. Well, the middies led at the half, but Notre Dame got its wake-up call in the third quarter when 58 to 27. Two. Penn State at third-ranked Ohio State. Brett Powers of the Buckeyes with a 25-yard touchdown pass, 24 to 6. Let's check it out in the top 10. Number one, Florida State, 54. Wake Forest, nothing. We told you about Notre Dame winning at Navy. And we told you about Ohio State, ranked third in the country, beating Penn State at home. Miami of Florida, 42, Temple, 7. Elsewhere, 5th rank Alabama, blank Southern Miss, 40 to nothing. 6th rank Nebraska beat Colorado, 21 to 17. Out west in the first quarter, UCLA leads Arizona, 7 to nothing. 8th rank Tennessee hammered South Carolina, 55 to 3. Number 9, Auburn over Arkansas, 31 21. 10th rank Florida, 33, Georgia, 26. There are better ways to spend a stormy evening rather than sitting in the rain and watching a football game. 
Tonight, only the most loyal of Hofstra fans brave the wind and rain on Long Island. Towson State, the opposition. And in the first, it was three before halftime. And here's Cromartie scoring from 44 yards out. Half 12. Scores of local interest. Princeton and Penn won. They show down for the Ivy League lead next Saturday at Penn. Dartmouth 39, Harvard 34. Cornell beat Brown 21 to 3. Bucknell took Fordham. Wagner defeated Marist. The Devils keep winning, and the most important goal against the Flyers was quicker than a blink of the eye. Stefan Roche, the Devils, the first of his two goals from center ice, past goalie Dominic Roussel, who couldn't believe it was behind him. 3-3 in the third, and Roche let go from the right side, a bullet of a shot that went through the net. It wasn't decided until the video judge looked at the videotape and ruled in New Jersey's favor. Referee Paul Stewart got the word from upstairs. Devils took it 5-3. to three. They've won eight of their first nine games. Tonight, the Rangers in Hartford enjoying a five-on-three power play. Adam Graves deflected a shot from the point to open the scoring. Rangers jumped to a 3-0 lead, and Graves tipped in another shot. Two for the night, eight for the young season. Rangers won it 4-1. to one. Goalie Mike Richter stopped 21 or 22 shots. Rangers unbeaten in their last three, starting to find their stride. The Knicks improved their preseason record to 7-1, and one, and that's it. Tonight, Knicks and Lakers in St. Petersburg, Florida. John Starks with the miss. Charles Oakley with the rebound. Patrick Ewing with the bucket. Ewing total 25 points. Knicks led by three at the half. They held L.A. to only 31 points in the second half and won 93-77. to 77. Last night, Nick Santagata became the all-time leading jockey at the Meadowlands. In the fifth race, Santagata aboard Vim and Vigor, and the win was the 739th of his career, putting him one ahead of Herb McCauley in the Meadowlands record book. After the victory, Santagata was greeted in the winner's circle by his fellow riders, and they smacked him with cream pies and sprayed him with champagne. Of course, all in good fun. Tomorrow's game, Giants and Jets. Gotta like the Giants. They have a better offensive line. If there are wet conditions, they'll control the ball and defeat the Jets. That's what I think, anyway. Well, Boom Boomer's been saying that they're going to come back, they're going to start the victory roll again. You don't think so? I don't think so. Not at all. But then again, I like the, uh, well, I like... <laughs> <laughs> Who do you like, Sal? I like the Giants. You like the Giants? Yeah. You okay. heard it here. Yeah. All right. right. Thanks a lot, Sal. The bride wore fangs, and so did the groom, for that matter. But it seems appropriate for a wedding held on Halloween Eve. The groom, Count Dracula, also known as Anthony Lugo, and his bride, Letitia Maldonado, will be pledging their love at midnight in a landmark building in Lower Manhattan said to be haunted by a blue nun. I'm not a blue nun, a five-foot nun. <laughs> okay. That's the latest tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Turn your clock back. Good night. Thanks for joining us.